Hey, what's going on, black people? What's happening? What's happening? My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and today we're going to talk about Dave Chappelle. I saw this uh, interesting story where apparently Dave Chappelle was getting sabotaged by a Netflix employee. Uh, you know, you know what it is. Uh, the, the 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 that special, the closer that Chappelle did on Netflix has uh, caused a lot of controversy. And of course, with controversy, you're going to have people fighting back. You're going to have some pushback. And apparently, there are employees within the Netflix company that have uh, actually violated company protocols uh, to go after Dave. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this and kind of break some of this down. So uh, get comfortable, buckle up your seatbelt. We're going to get started on the Black Financial Channel right now. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. This is the theblackfinancialchannel.com. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I'm your friendly neighborhood finance professor. On the Black Financial Channel, we talk about black wealth and black economics every day, sometimes as much as 10 times a day. Uh, The only condition is that you have to be B1. B1 means you're black first. Black first means that you put your community at the top of your priority list. Black first means that you understand we must be one, hashtag be one, in order to be successful. Uh, B1 also means that we are committed to Project 2070. Project 2070 is that by the year 2070, 50 years from now, our kids, B1 kids, are going to lead the world in economics, wealth, and, and asset acquisition and everything in between. Uh, financial literacy must be intentional. So if you agree with that philosophy, put the hashtag B1 in the chat. Uh, also, give me a yes. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay, because I hit a button just now and it made me wonder if my audio wasn't quite on. So uh, I'm feeling a little bit little bit shaky right now, a little bit insecure about it. So uh, give me a yes or no if you can hear me. Uh, let me know you can hear me okay. Uh, Abe Lincoln is joining from Jamaica and Linwood Robinson and Glenn and Kid Gravity. Good to see you. All right. So let's hop into the conversation. So you know that Dave Chappelle um, he, his special, the closer, uh, I don't have to tell you that it was a hundred percent, um, uh, controversial as, as all get out. Uh, he had a lot of pushback. There were a lot of people who were very upset with, uh, with what Dave had to say, but then there were a lot of people who were very happy with Dave. There are a lot of people who felt that Dave Chappelle did nothing wrong. A lot of people felt that Dave Chappelle, uh, did a wonderful job of kind of confronting cancel culture and kind of confronting, uh, you know, some of these things that, that some of these liberties that I've always felt to be sacred, uh, like freedom of speech, you know, um, for some reason we forgot as a country that we are supposed to be a free country, you know? So, uh, so I want to say shout out to Dave. I don't know Dave Chappelle personally, but I know a lot of people who know Dave Chappelle and I will say that Dave, it deserves to be honored and respected for the fact that he stood up for the rights of Americans to say what they want to say and to have an honest opinion. So, well, uh, obviously when you uh, take a stand like that, it's not going to always sit well with everybody. And so uh, this week, uh, Netflix uh, revealed that there was an employee at Netflix who was fired after they released private financial information about Chappelle and about that special, the closer. And, uh, in the, and some of it was reported in Bloomberg and I'm going to break down the financial side of it. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of extra Dr. Boyce breakdown on this to help you understand what's going on and what I'm seeing with all of this. So do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe button. If you haven't done it yet, uh, also make sure, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's very, very important. And, uh, don't forget that the all black national convention is coming up in just a few days. Uh, we are out of uh, vendor spots. We don't have, we, we sold out of vendor spots, but we still have a few spots for sponsors. If you'd like to be a sponsor, uh, if you'd like to learn more, uh, just visit allblacknationalconvention.com. Somebody type that in the chat for me because uh, I can't find the URL. So type allblacknationalconvention.com in the chat. All right. So here's what here's what's going on. All right. So basically, um, I'm reading here from Bloomberg. And it says uh, Netflix employee uh, for uh, Netflix fires employee for sharing confidential information. Netflix said it fired an employee for sharing confidential, commercially sensitive information outside the company. A Netflix official said the information was cited in the story by Bloomberg. Bloomberg News spokesperson said the company doesn't discuss how it may have obtained confidential newsworthy information. So Bloomberg had the information. Bloomberg reported the information. But Bloomberg is not revealing how they got the information. They're not telling anybody what happened or where they got the information from. Uh, Now, they said in an October 13th article, Bloomberg cited internal documents that showed that a comedy special by Dave Chappelle had an impact value of $19.4 million, meaning that it cost more than it generated. So they're basically saying that the, the, the Dave Chappelle special, The Closer, was uh, it was good. Dave is really funny, but Netflix actually theoretically lost money when they put this special out. That's their argument uh, because they, according to their algorithm, they they're arguing that they didn't actually make money from the special, which, you know, that's obviously debatable, but that's what they're saying here. Uh, now they said, Netflix evaluates its programs with an efficiency score that balances a show's reach with its price tag. 
The article is about employees who questioned the company's handling of comments by Chappelle that were seen as insensitive to trans people. Uh, quote, we understand this employee may have been motivated by disappointment and hurt with Netflix, Netflix said in an email statement. But maintaining a culture of trust and transparency is core to our company. Uh, now, uh, let's see. So so basically uh, what they're effectively saying is that this employee uh, decided to release this information to basically say that uh, the closer uh, Dave Chappelle special on Netflix didn't do well and didn't make money. Uh, let me see here. Now, there's um, there's also another article in Bloomberg where they said that Netflix staff raised concerns about Chappelle before the special before its release. The company is dealing with an internal outcry unprecedented in its history. Netflix Inc. Inc. employees concerns about offensive material in Dave Chappelle's new comedy special, The Closer, days before its release, warning executives that a series of jokes about gender neutral program, pro, pronouns and genitalia of transgender people was potentially inflammatory and damaging. Uh, the company's leaders, including global head of TV, Bela Bayara, Bayaria, and co-chief executive officer Ted Sarandos decided that the show didn't cross the line, sparking Netflix's most significant public labor dispute in recent his, recent memory. Employees have taken their grievances to internal forums and Twitter. At least three were suspended for crashing a meeting, then reinstated following the outcry. Then now the company is planning to host an internal event with uh, with with a certain activist uh, named Alok Bade Minon. Meanwhile, employees are planning to walk out on October 20th. So October 20th, the employees at Netflix are going to walk out over this Dave Chappelle special. Now, let me just say this. Uh, from what I'm seeing, I'm really kind of freaking out. I'm thinking, I find it very interesting that Netflix is standing by Chappelle as strongly as they are. Um, this really tells me that there's some senior management who are probably a little bit tired of cancel culture and a concern that that freedom of speech is being limited uh, when it comes to comedians who are pretty much able to push boundaries, right? Because that's what comedy does. And what's interesting to me is I, I want you to read, I want you to consider this too, though. Um, I sometimes I hear black people who don't believe that people should have freedom of speech. They believe that people should be banned for using certain language. If you call me the N word or whatever, well, you got to be careful about that because when they start telling other people they can't speak, then eventually they start telling you that you can't speak. So a lot of this um, suppression of free speech is a recursive uh, boomerang that has basically come from going along with an allegedly liberal ideology that says, if I don't like what you have to say, then you shouldn't be allowed to talk. Um, I challenge this openly because where I come from in academia as a professor, uh, the goal typically for good academics, for the good scholars, not, not the bad ones, not the ones who were just trying to get along with whatever the system was, the good scholars were the ones who said, I don't really care if your words offend me, I, I want to search for the truth. And if you're searching for the truth, sometimes the truth doesn't care about your feelings. The truth doesn't care if it offends you. The truth doesn't care if your feelings are hurt. The truth is going to be the truth, whether you like the truth or not. So uh, with that being said, uh, here's more about the Chappelle special. They said that the, uh, the, 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 Chappelle, the Chappelle is the most watched comedian on Netflix. 10 million people have put the closer on since his debut, according to a person familiar with viewer numbers. Co-CEO Reed Hastings said that the uh, streaming platform will continue to work with Chappelle in the future. He wrote on an internal message board. We see him as a unique voice, but can understand if you or others never want to watch his shows. So they're saying, look, if you don't like it, just don't watch it. Right. If you don't like it, just don't watch it. The comedian's popularity comes at a cost. Netflix spent twenty four point one million dollars on the closer, slightly more than the twenty three point six million it paid for the twenty nineteen special Sticks and Stones. By comparison, the streaming service spent three point nine million for Inside Bo Burnham's recent hour and a half special. The nine episode Squid Game, which delivered the best debut in Netflix history cost 21.4 million. So uh, I don't think it's fair necessarily to compare Chappelle to the Squid Game because the Squid Game was just, I mean, my Lord, the Squid Game was a blockbuster. I mean, my God, has anybody been watching the Squid Game? The Squid Game is, is it's an Asian show and it's literally the weirdest thing you've ever seen. And I, I actually really um, love the show because it really talks a lot about financial issues and it talks about um, it talks about cat, you know, capitalism and uh, exploiting the poor, but it also talks about the uh, the desperation that you create when you allow yourself to become victim of a uh, victim of financial addiction. Uh, when you dig into financial addiction, then what effectively happens is uh, exactly what we talk about on this platform. That uh, if you know Andre Hatchet, my my good buddy uh, out of Atlanta, he used to have the saying of "own or be owned." And so on the Squid Game, you basically got these games that people are playing in order to get out of debt. Right. So imagine a bunch of people that are covered with student loan debt 
where they say, look, either you're going to die in debt and your life will continue to be miserable, or you can play these games where if you win the game, you get all your debt paid. If you lose the game, then you die, right? And that's literally what the Squid Game does. It literally uh, puts people in this crazy situation where they're playing these little kid games and they're they're doing it all to get out of debt. So the Squid Game is all about money. It's all about finances. Uh, those of you who are students of mine who, uh, who uh, consider yourselves to be students of the Black Business School or anything that I've ever done, I want you to watch the Squid Game and I want you to take note of one important thing. I want you to notice how often the, the characters in the Squid Game are talking about money. I want you to notice how often they're talking about money. And I and I say this because for 15 years, ever since I started doing content online, which is about 15 years ago, I was always saying to you guys that money is everywhere, that money is like oxygen. It's just everywhere in your life. It permeates every part of your existence. It, it, it digs deep into your soul. If you are financially um, unstable, it wreaks havoc on your well-being. If you're financially at peace, then you can actually breathe a little bit better. You can actually rise to a higher vibrational frequency. You don't have to do crazy, ridiculous things in order to get money. You don't have to be desperate to get money, right? This is why I've told you guys a million times, and I, I hope you're hearing me. I, I repeat myself because I want to make sure the message is clear. Um, you got to make sure your kids are financially literate and also prepare for the, their financial future so that they have that space in order to live at a higher frequency. They don't have to sit around and do desperate things for money. They don't have to sell their body for money. They don't have to go sell all their labor for money. They don't have to spend time away from their kids to get money. They don't have to go chasing money, 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 <laughs> money, 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 I need money, need money, need money, right? Bad. And here's the thing. Let's circle this back to Dave Chappelle. So Dave Chappelle, if you look at the fact that Dave Chappelle is literally uh, take just literally took on cancel culture all by himself, all all by himself, all by himself. He took on cancel culture all by himself. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the fact that Dave Chappelle is financially free. It's all about the money. They don't know what to do with Dave Chappelle because they're like, damn. Normally, if we offer a Negro more money, he he becomes a good slave. You know, that works. That worked with Nick Cannon. That's worked with Snoop Dogg. That's worked with every celebrity where we threaten to cancel them and cancel that dollar bill, cancel that money. Then they get right in line. This guy isn't getting in line. He's not playing the squid game. Well, another guy that isn't that doesn't get in line, that doesn't play the squid game is this guy in this picture, Kanye West. Let me tell you a little secret. I haven't talked about this publicly, but I'm going to share a secret. I told you guys I had one conversation with Kanye West. He called me because he wanted to talk to me about Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, and y'all know I love Dr. Anderson to the fullest. I'm That's like my daddy. And uh, Kanye and I talked for about 10 or 15 minutes. In the conversation, he mentioned Dave Chappelle. And he mentioned Dave Chappelle as an advisor. Let me tell you something special about Kanye West and Dave Chappelle. Two things I want you to observe about these two guys and how they were able to resist cancel culture and able to overcome all of the uh, suppression and oppression that other people try to push on black people when we get out of line, especially black men. Two things. One, they, they, they are financially free, so they're not playing the squid game. Chappelle's got all the money he needs. He knows how to say, I've got enough. I don't need more money. You can't dangle another hundred million over my head and get me to play your stupid pet tricks because I'm not your pet, right? Kanye, He's now a billionaire. Uh, when I talked to Kanye, I thought he was worth about $1.1 billion. He actually said in that phone call, he said, I'm really worth about $4 billion. I, I was thinking, that's bullshit. You ain't worth no $4 billion, but I didn't care. It's whatever, right? You're rich. Good for you, right? But <clears throat> but I'll be damned if Forbes didn't come out later and revise his net worth to say that he's worth $3 or $4 billion. That's, so the first thing that I want you to notice about these guys, <clears throat> remember, God in the universe gives you your classroom every day. Your lessons that you learn are not... In the, in the university campus, they are in the world, right? This is a finance class for your ass right now. I'm giving it to you right now. So number one, both of these guys, because they're financially free and they know how to say, I have enough money, they are not playing the squid game. You can't, you can't use money as a carrot or a stick to beat them into submission. These guys are technically free. Whether you like them or not, they are free, right? That's what freedom looks like in, in the celebrity space. Number two, does anybody know anything about Kanye and Dave Chappelle's parents? Kanye and Dave Chappelle, the apple does not fall from the tree. The apple does not fall far from the tree. That's my hint for you. Tell me what you know about Kanye. What, what is the, here's, here's another hint. What is the profession of Kanye's parents? And what was the profession of Dave Chappelle's parents? 
Somebody put it in the chat for me. What did Donda do? Rest her soul. Let's call Donda into the room. Type Donda in the chat. What did Donda do for a living before she passed? What did Donda's husband, who Kanye's daddy, what did he do for a living? Right? I don't know much about him. He, they were both professors, if I'm not mistaken. They were both professors. What did Dave Chappelle's parents do for a living? Somebody answer in the chat. I've, I've given you the answer already, so it should be easy. They, too, were both professors. In fact, uh, I looked up Dave Chappelle's bio. Whenever I want to understand a celebrity, I look up their bio. And uh, let me see. Let me see if I can what I can find about Dave Chappelle um, uh, in his uh, background. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the thumbs up, share, subscribe button. These platforms are really important because you all know as well as I do that you, you don't hear this kind of stuff on every platform. So I hope you'll help us grow. Uh, we're up to almost 200 million views uh, total, and we're trying to change the world all by ourselves. So I could really use your help uh, because we need to get some intelligence out here. We need to respect black intelligence. Uh, so listen to this. David Kari Weber Chappelle was born August 24th, 1973 in Washington, D.C. His parents, Yvonne Chappelle Sion and William David Chappelle III, were professors, were professors. They weren't ignorant. They weren't stupid people. They were smart. He didn't grow up in a family that glorified ignorance. He grew up in a family that respected black intelligence. Kanye grew up in a family that respected black intelligence. So I'm telling you, if you want to know what freedom looks like, look at the picture of Dave Chappelle and Kanye West, who are not bowing to anybody. And they got this power and freedom from respecting the black intelligence that was passed on to them by their parents and grandparents. Let me keep reading. Let me read more of Dave Chappelle's background. You probably don't know these things. His great grandfather, Bishop D. D. Chappelle, was the president of Allen University. So his great grandfather was the president of a university. Like, so what I'm saying here is this: there is, you know, see, white people ain't scared of thugs. Cause they, they ain't worried if you a thug, you know, you just trying to make a rap album. They just lock your ass up and then you don't matter anymore to them. Right. They're not afraid of black people who, you know, are buffoons and clowns and make music and all that. They, that that's entertainment. That's fun for them. They're not afraid of even athletes and that doesn't bother them. You know what they're afraid of more than anything? They're afraid of intelligent black men who have courage. They are scared to death of those black men and women who have intellect and courage, who, who are demanding their freedom. Because they see this, this is the spirit of Toussaint Louverture. This is the spirit of all the great liberators. This is the, um, uh, 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 what's my brother's name? Um, the Nate, Nate Parker did a movie about him. Uh, my Lord, somebody put it in there in the chat because his name's not with me. Uh, he needs, we need to say his name so he'll come into, Nate Parker made a movie about him. Somebody put his name in the chat so I can remember his name. But that's what that spirit is. That's what that energy is, right? It's that that fearless black intelligence that they fear because I can, because if, if you are intelligent and you're able to think freely and critically, then you can, Nat Turner, thank you, Nat Turner. So let's say, so let's type Nat Turner in the chat. I want to bring him into the room. I'm bringing his spirit into the room. So Nat Turner, that energy, that intelligent, empowered, fearless black man, who's also a critical thinker is the guy who can see right through your nonsense. And he's not afraid to move forward. That's masculine leadership that you're observing, right? And, and so ultimately, um, Chappelle is is presenting that he's he's coming in dressed as the clown. The clown is not a threat. That's why the clown can get through the door. The scholar can't. They, they'll kill the scholar, but they'll let the clown in, right? So they'll let the clown in, thinking, "Oh, the clown's here. He's going to tell us jokes. He's going to make make us laugh." And then you find out that the clown is actually the scholar. Dave Chappelle, in my view, is the ultimate Trojan horse. Because Dave Chappelle went in there and did some things that a guy like me could never do. I would I will never have a deal with Netflix. I will never be on the stage at a at a comedy show. I will never be able to get the attention of millions of white people who are there to hear a joke. Right when I talk, white people get scared. Um, so I loved what Chappelle was doing because I was watching and observing. And I said, I know I was talking to my wife, who's also a professor, and I said. 
and says, so here's what's going on. Watch this. He's going to say something real ignorant to make you think he's ignorant. He's going to blend in with the real ignorant people. And then he's going to sneak in at the end. He's going to say something super deep. So so I, I love what he's doing. I think it's amazing. I think that he's actually um, really positioned himself well as a great leader in our society. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. All right. So anyway, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, again, uh, the URL for the convention is allblacknationalconvention.com. Uh, this is the Black Think Tank. This is the Black Brain Trust. Uh, so we are bringing together lots of smart Black people like Teddy Ewing, who is a crypto expert who's flying all the way from Egypt. We have 60 speakers, by the way. Uh, Carla Ballard, who has worked with uh, crypto billionaires, and uh, she's uh, one of the best in the world when it comes to cryptocurrency. Jay Ortiz, actually, who's a hip-hop artist out of Philadelphia, who actually has one of the first ever NFT art galleries. He's going to be there performing and also talking about his NFT art gallery. People like Lene Javette, a business star startup specialist, a brilliant black woman, Queen of Fua, one of the great health experts in our country, uh, an amazing woman. My brother, Devon Travell, he created the Black Wall Street game. He's going to be teaching on our children's track. We have a whole educational track for children. So if you bring your kids, you can drop your kids off and uh, don't worry about your kids. We're going to take good care of them and let them learn. And they're going to walk away transformed from the convention. Also, Victory Boyd, who was going to sing at the season opener for the NFL. They told her she had to get the jab. She told she gave them the middle finger and kept it moving. But she's an amazing singer. She's been a Rock Nation singer for many years and is extraordinarily talented. Brothers like Al Duncan. And, uh, and and Freddie, uh, Freddie, I don't have Freddie's last name in front of me, but these are two millionaire brothers. These are the types of brothers that I think our community needs to know about because uh, we since spend a lot of time hearing about the athletes and the entertainers. Well, I want to also make sure that we give shine to the people in the community that are really getting the damn thing done and doing the right work for the community. Now, let me let uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up, share, subscribe button. I want to share one thing about the Chappelle thing that, that, that this triggered me. This whole experience with Chappelle kind of triggered me. I was thinking about this today when my wife and I went running. We went down to um, uh, run this 5K race. And you guys know my journey. I'm trying to lose weight. And uh, it's always an uphill battle when you get past a certain age. But we went out and we did a little run. And uh, also we're getting ready for Halloween. That's what our house looks like. We actually put some really cool stuff in front of the house. And so uh, I've been doing daddy stuff. So as I was doing this daddy stuff and I was thinking about Dave Chappelle and my wife and I have been talking about what's been going on with Dave for a minute. And we know he's going to get pushed back, right? We know that that's par for the course. There's no reason to be alarmed or triggered by it. It's just that's what it is. When you really go to battle, the other team fights back. That's just what's going to occur. So, uh, So I was thinking about this. Here's what I thought about today. When I thought about Dave Chappelle and Netflix, you know what I thought about? I thought about when I was 15 years old. And when I was 15 years old, here's the deal. I, I have never in my adult life ever dated a white woman. I, not because I hate white people, but because I just love black women that much. You know, there's things about black women that you can't replicate anywhere else. And also, I felt that the best way I could be a supporter of the black community is to commit myself to uh to black people right whatever that means right that means if i got married i told you guys 10 years ago before i even started dating my wife i said if i get married it'll be a black woman period i'm not gonna fall in love with becky that just i don't accidentally fall in love i'm very intentional about what i allow myself to get close to well um one time i i one thing i've never mentioned on this platform is that when i was 15 years old there was a white girl that i liked and her name was, I think, Christian or Christy or something. I don't remember. We went to see School Days. Remember that Spike Lee movie, School Days? So we went to see School Days. And uh, School Days, if you haven't seen it, like if you're not old enough to remember School Days, you got to see School Days. You're a big brother almighty, right? So School Days is like a great movie and um, one of the best of all time. And uh, I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Like I'll, like I'll pull up some imagery so you can kind of see it. So she actually, so she was one of those like supposedly cool white people, right? You know, you got white people who you know, who really want to be black. And so there's, there's school days. That's some of the imagery of school days. It was like a real wild kind of crazy show. And uh, and this dude right here, I forgot his name, but he's still acting and still kicking ass. And then this sister, um, I think she's in some stuff. I don't, I don't remember names very well, so you got to forgive me. Uh, but anyway, long story short, so uh, this white girl, Christine, Christine, whatever, I was captain of the track team and she um, liked me and I liked her. I thought she was cute. And at that time I wasn't real racially sensitive. You know, I just, you know, I was just happy to have a girlfriend. I just thought girls were nice. And um, anyway, uh, so this girl, I, her father used to come to our track meets and her, her father uh, saw, would see me run. And I was pretty fast. I wasn't the fastest ever, but I was pretty fast. You know, like I, I would run the 200 meters and get first place. And, and I remember he was like, he's like, wow, you're really fast. And I was like, yeah, thank you, sir. You know, and uh, and I thought this guy liked me. Well, he liked me until he found out that I was dating his daughter. And y'all know how that goes. Right. 
And uh, and I remember that this girl, uh, we used to pass notes in school and it was like, uh, you know, like like we would, you know, you know, you pass notes and you get really excited because you get the note and you read it and then you write a note back. And uh, when we did all that. Right. And uh, and then one day she just stopped passing me notes. She would just walk past me and just disappear, whatever. And and I didn't understand what was going on. I was really sad. You know, I was like kind of traumatized. You know, it's traumatizing. Right. When you're a kid. And I didn't understand what was going on. And I remember I, I called her. And every time I called her, she was never home. She was never available. Her mom would answer and say she can't talk right now, whatever, right? And then one day, I think I caught her on the phone and I figured it out. Like, you know, it takes a while to figure out that you fall, fell for the banana and tailpipe because you're like the dummy who's thinking, well, what's going on? Like, obviously, oh, you keep missing me. It must be, wow, what a coincidence. You're never home when I call. You know? And then and then I said, I said, oh, is it? I said, you can't date me because is it because i'm black and that's when she just kind of said yeah right and i remember it just like broke my heart like it made me so sad because i didn't understand why somebody would dislike me just because i was black like i didn't understand it i was like I, i'm not a bad person i didn't do anything wrong i didn't i just didn't get it right and it made me really it just really it really hurt my feelings it was terrible right so anyway i promise you i'm getting back to the dave Chappelle thing so i went back to my my parents and i told my parents what happened and my father, my father was pissed. My father was so mad. And he said, he was like, F them and blah, 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 blah. And he said, that's why you reject them before they reject you. Right. You know, and 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 I heard that. Right. And now, don't get me wrong. I think my father's energy was maybe a little bit over the top. Maybe there's a better way to kind of handle that. But his argument kind of made sense. It was, you know, if you it, it, that you probably shouldn't spend your life chasing waterfalls. Right. Um, you know, or you shouldn't be spend your type of time wanting things that don't want you back or wanting to be in places where you're not wanted. Right. And, and this really stayed with me. This really stayed with me as, first of all, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Like I said, I never dated a white girl again. I would have white girls flirt with me and I'd be like, what do you, what does that mean? I, I don't even know. Like I, it was no of zero interest to me. And then also, like I said, I mean, black women, y'all just so beautiful. It just, there's nothing that really compares to a black woman in my view. Um, and so, so it was easy. It wasn't hard, but literally when I started thinking about how I viewed the racism, racism really didn't offend me that much because I started learning the realities of, th of things that Dr. People like Dr. Anderson talk about, which is they don't really like your black ass that much. Right. And you probably aren't helping yourself by chasing around looking for love in all the wrong places, because that is a devaluation of your own self-worth, right? So when you go back to that little girl who didn't want to date me because I was black, well, you know, first of all, you know, F her, right? Like, like what, what, who the hell are you? Like, you ain't all that anyway, right? But, but, in, but if you allow them to kind of do that to you, to say, we're rejecting you, but you're never going to reject us, you want us, but we'll never want you, then effectively you're kind of committing yourself to this sort of awkward hierarchy where the, where they're here and and you're here and and they're 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 running away and you're doing all the chasing right and that kind of puts you in a position of weakness a position of desperation a position where you're always kind of on your heels because you're always looking for love in all the wrong places and so uh one of the things that I think Chappelle did that I thought was quite intelligent is and and I understand it because this is a kind of exactly what I did I realized I said, white supremacy can't really hurt me if I reject them before they reject me. Like if I just say, you know what, I don't even want to be like, I've always said this to you guys. A lot of people come up to me and they say, boys, your podcast is doing so well. You're getting millions of views. One day you might be mainstream. And honestly, I used to say, fuck the mainstream. I, wh why the hell I want to be mainstream? They need to come over here. If they want, if they want to be in this space, they have to earn the right to be in my space. I don't have to earn the right to be in their space because I am good enough. What we have here is good enough. What we're doing over here is good enough. It's not just good enough. This is black excellence and black excellence is unmatched by anything that's ever been created in the history of this world as far as I'm concerned. So, so the mainstream can kiss my whole entire black ass. Um, I'm not begging uh, CNN to put me on TV. I don't give a damn. I have turned down national television interviews. I don't care about mainstream media. I don't care about anything that they have going on. In fact, I, I care so little about it that I'm not even mad about it. I don't sit over here saying, man, I'm I'm just as talented as them. And they, and they put him on TV, but they won't put me on TV. No, I don't want that because that, that's a trap. That's a trap.
the minute you get to the point where somebody has something that you need and that you're addicted to, then they control you. You are the addict and they become the pusher. And never in the history of dope addiction has an addict ever had more power than the pusher. Seriously. So don't, so, 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 so the, one of the things that, that Chappelle did that I believe was awesome. And he probably learned this from his really smart parents is he rejected them before they could reject him. He said, he said, take that 50 million and I need you to find, find your butthole. And I need to shove that 50 million right all the way up your entire ass. Uh, because I don't need any of that money. He talked about that. He said, I walked away from 50 million. And 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 a few of y'all said that makes sense. But there's always those people out there that say, why would you walk away from 50 million? Well, if you look at the common factors, the commonalities between, look at the freest black celebrities in America. Uh, you got Dave Chappelle, Kyrie Irving, whether you like them or not, Kanye West, whether you like them or not. You, you might not agree with them, but you can't say that they're not free. You can't say that they're not doing what they want to do. The common denominator is that they have rejected the butter biscuits. They reject the butter biscuits before you even put them in the oven. They're like, you know, I don't even want all that. And this is actually a spiritual concept. This is spiritual. This is not just, just you know, informative. This is spiritual. The Buddhists talk about that. The Buddhists say that the best way to be free is to want nothing. Whenever you commit yourself to wanting something, you are making yourself vulnerable. Right. So it doesn't mean you can't want anything, but it means that, that the things you want, you got to think carefully. Like, do I really want to put myself in a position where I want and need this thing? Because that is going to weaken my position in terms of my ability to do what I want to do. So at the end of the day, uh, a lot of your celebrities are um, controlled and constrained and unable to move or navigate because somebody got them addicted to the money. They got them addicted to the power. They got them addicted to the platform. They got them addicted to whatever, right? And and and, and Dave Chappelle's a guy who said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm enough right here. Who I am is enough. I don't need anything that you have to validate me because I validated myself. When you are able to self-generate your own internal validation without the need of your oppressor tapping you on the forehead and saying, good boy, like you a puppy, that is the formula to create a free black man, a free black woman. So going back to Dave Chappelle and Kanye West having parents that were college professors, they weren't just professors. They were black professors who were truly connected to the black experience. The reason that they're able to stand firm in a world full of flimsy Negroes is because somebody told them who they were when they were little babies. Right. So they don't need the white man to tell them who they are. Dave Chappelle does not need anybody to tell him that he's a brilliant comedian. He knows he's the goat. Right. So shout out to the goat. And Dave Chappelle has only ascended further into the heavens of the greatest comedians of all time with what he just pulled off. He might he might actually have just passed up Richard Pryor uh, because as, as great as Richard Pryor was, that that level of consciousness wasn't quite as much there with Pryor. But then again, you, if you know Pryor's history, he's that poor guy went through a lot. So I'm not dissing, dissing him at all. OK, so pay attention, black people. This is the formula for freedom. This is the formula for success. That other stuff. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to your rivers and your lakes that you're used to. To, to quote my cousin, who's actually in TLC, y'all know I told y'all about that. Um, that that's really, I think, a good model for Black people who want to be free. Okay, stop wanting things that are controlled by your oppressor because that puts you in a vulnerable position. All right, got it? Give me a yes in the chat if you get what I'm saying. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna head on out of here. Follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is the Real Boys Watkins. Um, I need more intelligent Black people to follow because I I don't I. I kick stupid people i kick them out so please follow me if you like intelligent conversations on instagram also uh boyswalkins.com if you go there you can get a free e-copy of my book it takes a village to raise the bar it's a short read but it is totally free so feel free to go take a look at the book and i'll also send you some free information about economics and wealth and everything in between because you guys know my phds in finance and i love teaching and sharing and helping you guys solve problems all right so uh and of course last but not least you know i gotta mention the all black national convention so if you want to take a look at the convention Go to allblacknationalconvention.com. We do have virtual tickets, uh, but we would love for you to come down physically to Orlando. 
we sold out of the discounted hotel rooms and we sold out of the vendor spaces, but there are some sponsor spaces available. And I think the hotel does have some regular priced rooms and there are some lower cost hotels in the area. So we're going to put a list of some lower cost hotels there. Uh, so come down, bring your kids, bring your church group, college students get in free with a valid student ID. And uh, we, the Black Brain Trust will be gathering. We got 60 speakers who are high octane, intelligent black people who are there to solve problems because we ain't playing. We're getting it done. We're making it happen. And we don't need nobody's help. So God, God bless you. Uh, take care, everybody. And shout out to Dave Chappelle. If you watch this video, Dave, I'm very proud of you. And I look forward to talking to you one day in the future. So take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Peace.